Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Sorry for the delay, I think we've got gremlins in the works. Um, so a few testy words, but we're live. And the first time in 19 months I've been live. So welcome. Today, it coming up for Halloween. So inspired by pumpkins. So I've got some really cute little pumpkins here and just trying to work out how to bring them to you. Black watercolour paper. I, I tend to use this quite a lot and some gouache and I thought that would work really nice for a pumpkin painting. So now with the pumpkin painting, I'm just going to create it because it's literally two eyes and nose and a mouth and you can be re have a lot of fun with the shapes. So I'm going to start with the first one. So I'm going to do a bigger one, a medium one, and a little one. I'm just going to make a colour. So I'm using designer gouache. And I've got two reds. The reason is because I don't want too many colours in the pumpkin, but I want different oranges, just different tonal values. So I didn't know which red gave me the better colour. So I've got the... Permanent Rose, which is a really nice mixing colour, and, oh, I can't do that, Cadmium Red, which is a bit more orange. So one's a bit more blue, one's a bit more orange. And they will give me two um, nice colours of orange. A little bit of blue, maybe for darkening, and white. And that's it, really, the basic red, yellow, blue colours. So let's start with some eyes. Just plotting. Now with gouache, the great thing is, is you can, I don't think that's the shape I wanted. Let's change that shape. I want it a little bit. That's better. I think I was looking the wrong way. The great thing with gouache is you can paint over and you can alter very easily. So. Uh, making a thin wash of a light colour using the colours I have on the palette. So just to plot out, just to decide to sketch out key features like the eyes. Let's change that. Let's put a nose in. And let's do a big smile and give them book teeth. It doesn't have to, the great thing is it doesn't have to be even. It can be as wonky as you want or as mismatched as you want because it's a Halloween pumpkin and the idea is to create a fun face. So I have facts about pumpkins I have facts about Halloween so if we run out of things to talk about I'll find some more facts somewhere so pumpkins they are native to America I'm just you can see using the brush and what's left on the brush to create a shape and like I say you can alter the shape a little bit. I'm making this quite narrow, I didn't realise that. So what I'll do is I'll add a little bit fatter. So pretty much as you would do with a pencil, just sketching out. Not sure if I like that shape fully, so maybe I'll add another one to round it out. I'll do I'll do for that one so see how that just built up I added a few more areas and I'm just going to now fill in this mouth so for me I'm going to start with the mouth and the eyes because with the pumpkin being carved these are the areas that are lit so they're the lightest areas and then 
I'll build up the pumpkin, the orange bit of the pumpkin. But because I'm using the black paper, it does help with shade and the darker areas. And you'll see as I build it up, there's some areas I don't need to paint because I've already got my blacks or my darker layers. So literally just thinking about shape. It could be uneven, it could be even. It really doesn't matter, it's fun. I think that's the key to this. So the jack-o'-lantern or the pumpkin, the reason why it's like this is from old Celtic traditions in Britain and Ireland where a turnip was carved to ward away evil spirits. And I was reading about a tradition of Stingy Jack. So Stingy Jack, as the name suggests, was stingy and didn't like to pay for anything. So when he met the devil in a public house, he didn't want to pay for his drink, so he tricked the devil into buying him a drink with the promises. Um, but he tricked the devil and didn't fulfill on his promises. And then again later, he meets the devil again and again tricks the devil to not taking his soul to hell and giving him time. So because he tricked the devil, when he does eventually die, God won't let him into heaven because he's disreputable. And the devil kept his word and wouldn't let him into hell, didn't take his soul to hell. So what he did was sent him on his way with a lit coal, which Jack kept in a carved pumpkin um, and doomed to wander the earth. So as with many traditions, these have all changed and developed over the years. And so Halloween, the 31st of October, has been born from those traditions and carving of the pumpkin is to keep away evil spirits and the fire inside because they used to light fires and probably still do, that's why they, it's a fire inside to keep away evil spirits. People wore masks so that ghosts wouldn't recognise them. So all these traditions probably started in Celtic mythology or have grown into what it is today. And I think Halloween or All Hallows Day celebrated, as I said, on the 31st, the day before All Saints Day, which is the 1st of November. And again, that has moved, I think in the 7th century, Boniface the 4th created All Saints Day in May. But in order to kind of supersede a pagan tradition, it was moved to the 1st of November. And so they've all kind of intermingled with Halloween actually probably being the much stronger tradition and has become a, a big part of this time of year. So pumpkins, and I'm, all I'm doing is I'm putting a base layer on here, the orange. I don't always mix fully, so I have a bit more yellow on one side, a bit more red on another. I'll just see where it goes. So pumpkins, they're native to America which is why it's a big tradition in America to carve a pumpkin. I think a French explorer saw them, ca called them pepillons, which means little melon. And pumpkin 
evolved, the word pumpkin evolved from there. So edible, very nutritious pumpkins are. And the great thing is they are in season at this time of year, which is probably why they have become a stable for carving. And you can see I'm putting the colour on and I'm not putting it on neatly. Again, the skin of the pumpkin is wrinkled and pitted. So it's great. I don't have to worry too much about having it smooth because the colour isn't, the pumpkin itself isn't smooth. I can just scrub it on and be quite loose and you can see the darkness coming through the paint there. That's all part of the characteristic of pumpkin. So it's, it's just a dream for me. I don't have to worry too much about being neat and tidy. I can just scrub it on. A bit more red here. Not worrying about colours. They will work together. I will, at a later date, possibly add a little bit of detail. At the moment, just putting that colour on. Okay. I'm not even overly worried about light at the moment. That's going to come at the end because I can add white and put areas maybe I've been a bit over keen with back to dark because on this paper it will lift off. So I can just lift it off and take it back. If I feel I've gone a little bit too dark and a bit too bright. And you'll see the colour does drop back. So I put it on and it looked very bright to start with and then it's dropped back a little bit because of the black surface. So this is a watercolour paper designed to take watercolour washes and work with the watercolour paint or gouache in this case. So I'm going to just lighten this up now. So in this eye. So because there is a candle or a perceived candle behind, I want to lighten up the eyes. So I'm going to have this area here the lightest. And because I have put a wash of colour on top, now the next layer isn't going to be quite as absorbed into the dark layer. It's not, it's going to be a lot lighter. So I can now start to add much lighter areas. So this is working for me because I wanted that dullness and the eyes emerging from the darkness. And to be honest, it's done it for me. So I'm just using white now, just to show that that's the lightest area. And again, I'll let it drop back, see how light it does end up. And I can always add more. drama. Let's fill this bit in here. I'm all for putting colour on and then moving round. So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to then let that settle and move on to the second pumpkin. So from the light, it gets darker as you move away from it. So I'm going to use the black paper to help me do that. Just less colour. Let's move further away. Drying my brush. And I want some quite strong colour around here. I want to just bring that out.
too strong, but it doesn't matter. Oh, I forgot my nose. Okay. That needs to be very light because the flame is really up into the nose. Again, leaving bits. Right, so that's the first one. Not finished at all. But I want to sketch out the second one. So what kind of eyes can I do? Um, don't know. Let's just do some... Oops, a bit too big. So let's just strengthen that one. I don't know, put some nose on. And I'm going to put teeth. Just using the tip of the brush. That's giving me a really interesting Again, it doesn't have to be even. That's the fun part about this. So this let's, is on top. To be a little bit smaller. And pumpkins are just so diverse in their shapes. You can really have fun with shape. Right, I think I might have to take away some teeth. Okay, and you can see how I can lift off. Just lift it off. Reason being is I need this to be smaller on top. And his teeth were too big. The same bit so in the eye. I think both his eyes are a bit big. Just alter it. If you know your materials, you know you don't have to use a pencil every time. And I think this is quite freeing just to be able to put paint on, use a brush. All of these things I can alter and change as I go on. So let's flatter there. While I'm at this, I think I'll do another. Let's give him triangle eyes. I want him to, him or her, I am, there's no gender, I don't suppose, on pumpkins, but I just want this one to be looking away. Triangle nose. And let's have some So this one is actually stacked on top. Let's do the amazing, because this one's on top, these will not have their stalks because um, it won't make them sit flat. Let's put the one at the top, I can give it the s these amazingly shaped stalks they have and I looked at it again and they have these wonderful dry like springs so definitely that's getting into the painting and wonderful curly shapes okay there you go that's done so all I need to do now is fill in the colour Eyes light because that's where the lightest source is. You can make them more complicated. But sometimes the simple shapes are just as effective. Don't 
to the brush, nice sharp edge. So I did have a go at pumpkin carving. And to be honest, I haven't done it for many years. And the problem was I could only find a very small pumpkin. It's not as easy because I wanted to do a little bit more formed. I think it takes practice for these amazing ones you see that are carved. I think just making sure you've got nice eyes, shapes, and a nose and a mouth to give it that human form. And be able to put the light coming through. Shape, reshape these. Okay. I think they're coming together already. Okay. Done. Right. So if I put orange on those, then they are getting there with colour. Don't know about you, but if if something's not got colour on, I've, it kind of bothers me, and you kind of overthink something. So if I've got the colour on let it settle, see what happens, then I can work on the great fun of the detail part. Again, not mixing the colour really well. I do need to keep the mouth. Give it some... Now with gouache, if you put it on quite, you can put it on quite thickly, um, very much like an oil paint or an acrylic paint. I'm putting it, putting it on a little bit more thinly because I'm trying to make the paper work for me as well. And you can see I'm not filling in all the areas either. I might just go round here and leave a little bit of black. I think that's going to look a little bit more so using that black paper to work for me. By not painting on it, which is fun. So again, let's do the same here. Let's just leave a black outline around the eye. One big segment there, a little segment here. Nose. I don't know what I'm doing with the nose. I'll just leave a space around it. In that segment and that segment. So that one's done, it's got colour on. Let's go to the next one. There now think about possibly light on the pumpkin. But look how simple that was. I really didn't mix colour. I just put it on and the material has done the job for me, which I always find that very satisfying when you don't have to do a huge amount of work so a little bit wetter so it drops back and it merges into the paper notice I'm also starting at the bottom which is where I want more color because the top will be darker if you've got your light source here it's where the strength is, and it's even going to glow through the face, which is why I'll look at that in a minute. But it means here's going to be darker as well because it's in shadow because you've got a pumpkin on top. So all those things which you think about when you're doing any painting doesn't mean you need to not think about it when you're working on the black. 
or doing something which is a little bit more stylized like this. Those little features like highlights and shadow take a very simple shape, which this is. It isn't a complicated shape. They take it to that extra level and adds a little bit more drama to the painting. Okay, I'm just filling. Now this one's a bit fun because we can put the stalk on it and that they kind of twist. So they twist around. Okay. And I must remember the last thing I want to do is really add those amazing twirls. So let's go back to this one. Because I actually quite like how simple those are. I don't know if I want to really do too much on those. So I'm, but I want to... Let's add white. Now white is a great... Makes things much more opaque and lightens things. So let's just think about where your light source is. So here, I'm going to make this light up a little bit more, especially here. Dabbing off my brush. Notice how much areas that I have left and the black is showing through. That's because I'm being quite quick. And I'm not being overly careful, but it works. See here? It adds that shadow. Okay, so I'll make this lighter as well because it's still glowing through the pumpkin skin. But the dark areas will also be at the bottom because the light is going up, radiating out, but it doesn't probably radiate too far, depending on how strong a light you've got. So let's add a bit more strength out here. want to make sure I've got some good light. Now here I'm just going to darken. So clean brush, dabbed off, damp off, and I'm going to lift off and take it back. So it's given me some more shadow. Like I say, working with gouache is it's a lot of fun and a joy because you don't have to worry about a lot of things maybe that go wrong because it's so easy to go back in or take off. It, it really is a versatile medium. Because it's so opaque, I can cover like in an acrylic if you've, you've got an area, you, you just cover it rather than take it out. But like a watercolour, I can also lift off. So just I think that helps. I'm going to do now. I'm going to do some 
empty too. Just bringing out a little bit of the shape of the segments. And then a few dots and blemishes. Again, my brush to a point, so I need to twist it on the palette. I'm twisting it and making sure I've got a nice point. Just so it doesn't have such a flat finish. With light, the light I've been quite careful I'm not putting it on until the end because I want to see how it finishes how the paint has dried because it, you can get over eager I know I can and then you're having to change things My light is my last thing. Could do with a bit more here because the light is coming this way. Make it a bit more orange. Might darken that off. Dark orange as well. Right. Got a freckle now. Now they also have a bit of green. So okay, that's quite a nice different just add a little bit of different colour. A little bit of detail around here. Okay, just turn that down a little bit because some shadow. Right, the next one should be quick. I don't think that's. Like I say, I don't mix overly. I just pick up and see what is on the brush.
again the light it's going to be Strengthen some of these areas. When I've mixed a colour and I pick up a colour, I do try and do it in different areas so it's not just concentrated in one area. So here I've just mixed a little bit more red into it. And instead of just doing this area, I will drop it here, maybe a bit here, just so it's a little bit more harmonious <sighs> with the colours. This doesn't make sense. I don't like that too much, so let's fix it. Yes, that was it. I didn't like that shape. With this one, I think this side's going to be darker, so let me take that back. Give it a bit redder. Using the black paper to give me shadow. Right. What else do I need? I need light. Much more light. Or much more concentrated light source. So. I know what I'm missing, I'm missing some white. I tend to jump around, so my brain is thinking about three stages ahead. I'm not good at concentrating on one thing and then not moving on, because if I've picked up white on my brush, I tend to think of areas which I want to put white on. My brush. Still thinking about the shape so that they have a nice rounded shape. And I want to bring that out. You can see each little mark just adds that little bit more. to the detail. So that's all I'm doing is let's do this. Just catching the surface. A few dots to suggest the skin. No, I don't like that. I've 
probably gone a little bit too over keen with the white. And let's also, the bush is getting a bit dry. Let's also lighten here because that's where the light is coming from. So lighten at the front. some blue there because I lost a little bit of the shaping and I'm going to use some yellow and blue to again more texture scrub up the brush green on here I can put green on here that was just yellow originally okay go on to the next one and then I can come back so I quite like the light on this side I know it's changing all the rules the light comes from one source but this is Halloween this is a pumpkin. We can change how we want it to be. Give me some light. out from there. A bit more orangey light. It's really making that mouth stand out. Add a bit of more colour on the pumpkin, not too much quite like the the thing is they are quite solid so if you want it to look like a pump you need it to look like quite solid or it could look more ghost like okay a yellow bit of red quite watered down Drying off my brush because a dry brush does work nicely to blend these colours into one another. So again, as I've done on the other ones, this these areas would be lighter because that's where your light source is. much red in this one so put a bit more okay so if I put a little bit of detail on the top one I can work back and then add details as I think it needs too strong dry my brush off This is definitely still, I need to 
do those final light because that's the dramatic light is what I'm looking for. So I've really dried off my brush and I'm just picking up pretty much neat white which can be dangerous which I've just shown there. That's got a bit strong. So let's try and dabble some white on. And my brush is pretty dry. Just stipple. It won't just be white, I will put some. I think the white's dried up a bit. Okay, it's, it's working now. I like some of these red dots as well. And some of the green. Right. I just want to neaten these edges off a bit, blend them, right, final light, so that one's nice yellow. White, right. Sometimes find that white isn't always the lightest, so I'm really nice yellow very with a lot of white and a touch of yellow sometimes it makes things much brighter than bright white i know it sounds odd but you just get that much warmer glow with a, a yellow light than you do with the stark white So I'm just thinking flame colours. Right, that's a touch of the white. So the more layers I put on, and you can layer with gouache, that just really strengthens the colour. in here again with that yellow light see how that's changed that just by adding a yellow light it's really started to bring those much brighter light and my brush is getting dry it's probably getting filled with pigment as well so it's getting a bit stringy and I'm not keeping a fine point just need a good clean same here So on the black, it does possibly take a bit more layers of the light paint in order to 
get that really luminous light that you get on a white surface. But you do get it eventually. And I, the beauty with a gouache is you can do that. You can keep layering. light sources here. So I might make these a little bit more orange. Still not got it quite light enough. That's because I need a clean brush. And really need to get into the white so I'm one new white now notice how the white has dropped back on on here so I again want to This is the fun bit, this is the bit where you can just see the texture come together. But I also can get a little bit overexcited with this. And what I'm going to do is my very thin brush. I'm going to see if I can create those little streams. Now I'm going to add white to the mix because the black paper will just absorb those streams. Now I've not tried this before, so this is going to be fun. But they, you get these lovely... That's just stop talking and breathe because you can't do little detail things like this. Talk and breathe at the same time. <laughs> you might have some coming out of here. I'm not sure what they are because there's the you've got the leaf and you've got obviously the stem. So I'm not actually sure what they are. I'm sure they're an integral part of the plant. It's probably part of it that's, and it just dries like that. But it's great, great for painting. And some are bigger. So I'm not catching the bottom. Okay, there we go. To the blue, it's a bit darker. That's why I go with the light colour to start with because it's the best for covering. It's fun to try this. Use your brush and get it to create fun marks. Oh, what's the darkest I can go? It's more blue. I didn't put a lot of blue out because I didn't think I'd use too much. I just want to now get a dark colour. You could. I haven't got black because 
I know I can mix a dark colour with the colours I've got, the red. This is red, well, permanent rose, I think. Rose, permanent, yeah, permanent rose. And then a drop of yellow. darkest colour I've got. I don't think I want that for two. Right down to here. Move my brush. Hmm. better. Can just, can just bring out a little bit more dark. And that gives it a sharp edge because they're carved. So they will have a sharp edge. But it also gives me the chance to clean up and See the teeth, not quite as sharp, but I can sharpen now. Yeah, just get some nice more definition. Tidying. You can see under that nose it hasn't got any colour. So. Okay. Yes, I think that looks okay. One last thing, because it looks a bit stark there. Two last things. One, it needs a base. It's floating amid at the moment, so just wet the page, pick up a little bit of orange because the wonderful black paper does a lot of the job. Give me a shape. Just picking up a little bit of the light. Not a bit of colour, not too much. And then I think what I'm going to do is may hopefully put a bit of mist around to so just wetting the page. Just dry quite quickly. And I'm using my dirty water pot. It doesn't matter. I just want to take off the stark black. And give it a glow. So this is a cellulose paper, which is why the water is 
not staying on the surface as easily as uh, cotton paper. You do get black watercolour paper in cotton. But for gouache, it works quite well. So let's grab some of this white. Maybe drop a blue on it, a bluey white. One side's probably going to be lighter than the other. And you won't see this as well until it's dried. Great thing about this, you could have made it sparkly. You could have used a metallic on this. And you notice, even though I have touched the gouache, it can move, but it's, it's, it doesn't always move as readily as watercolour does. Okay. I think that's there. There's places I can fix that. Just set them there. That isn't strong enough. Not giving me... Strong, in, strong enough shadow or grounding. So let's make it stronger. These are probably things that you come back to. So you, you paint it, you leave it, and then come back. It gives you a really good view of things that do need changing and a lot of things that don't. And there's probably bits and areas I'd like to work on. But I hope you enjoyed that. And, you know, just have fun with shapes and patterns and hope you can use that for inspiration. And join me again next week, hopefully, for another live demonstration.